20% of our Australian neighbours are living with a disability, a, a permanent condition that impairs them in some way. Um, and these are our brothers and sisters, the neighbours that we are called to love as Christians. Uh, we want to make sure we are including them in our uh, church life, in our communities, um, inviting them as visitors and welcoming them, uh, and also um, helping them be able to serve and exercise uh, their gifts um, as members of our, our churches, as um, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, that they might be a blessing uh, to others and grow in their faith as well. Um, there are difficulties when it comes to church planning with all our uh, temporary buildings we're starting with, um, different spaces we're meeting in, um, but there are things you can uh, do uh, to um, promote inclusion for people with disabilities. Um, there's uh, the physical environment, um, there are changes you can make about external internal access, um, access to kitchen and toilet facilities, um, uh, the way uh, you set up your hall in terms of flexible seating and access to resources like everybody else. Um, but not only thinking about that as uh, someone with a disability as a visitor, but someone who is a member and wants to serve in that kitchen and be able to help on the morning tea roster, the supper roster, have they got full access like everybody else. Um, there are access consultants out there to help you with advice on modifying your environment, whether it's temporary modifications or permanent. And um, and there's resources and phys uh, physical equipment that you can get in place, like portable ramps and stair lifts, things like that, um, to help you overcome those physical barriers, um, even when it's not a permanent space of yours. Uh, if you're in privileged enough to be able to build, be able to build a space for your church plant, uh, you, there's uh, universal design principles. That mean you're designing in a way uh, that's either accessible now to someone who's a wheelchair user or um, can be easily adapted later on um, to cater for someone who has mobility aids. Um, if we think about inclusion, if we're catering uh, to people who use wheelchairs and mobility aids, we're going to include everybody, mums with prams, um, they can get in that front door as well. Uh, there's also a range of disabilities uh, we need to think about. Our, um, we might have someone with an intellectual disability, uh, autism, um, uh, mental health illnesses, all those kind of things. We need to be thinking about the culture of our churches towards people with disabilities as well. And that filters down from the staff team and our leadership team. Uh, you can get um, consultants in, uh, people from different associations. So, for example, we had a lady with Down syndrome in one of our churches. Um, there were some conflicts there, issues relating to her. So we had someone from the Down syndrome association come and advise the staff um, on how to relate and care for her. Uh, and that was really effective. I uh, just want to make you aware of the Luke 14 project um, that I've been involved in as a, a volunteer. Um, it starts from, uh, started from CBM in uh, Victoria, Christian Blind Mission, and um, they can provide liaisons for you to help you link with um, disability communities in your mission area and uh, think about who is out there in the community, how you can uh, contact them and, um, and how you can love and care for them and include them in your Christian community. Um, yeah, so there are things we can do now. Uh, there are things that you can think about for the future. Um, but we all want to be including um, those people with disabilities in our in Christian communities uh, so that we can show the love of Christ and um, we can allow them to be a blessing to us as, um, as they are to um, each other and um, as we want to be to them.